Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I want to help you hit your forehand more cleanly by helping you to understand what's causing you to pull off it rather than hitting through it and explaining what you need to do to fix the problem. I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel. Okay, so why is it that you have a tendency to pull off your forehand rather than hitting through the ball like you see from the pros when they do the slow motion videos? What this comes down to is there's, there's often two things that can go on that can cause this problem. The first one is getting too close to the ball. So if I place the ball there and I think about that as my ideal contact point, if I get too close to it, my brain is gonna recognize that and it's gonna to have to pull off my shot. So ideally, I should be swinging out to there and making contact, but now I'm too close. So my brain is gonna see, at the last second, it's gonna realize I'm too close and that's gonna cause you to pull off. Now, obviously, this looks a little bit different if you've got a bent arm to a straight arm. So I can be further away with a straight arm. If I hit with a bent arm, I'm gonna be a little bit closer. So it's a relative thing. If you're too close to the ball relative to the way that you hit your forehand, that's gonna cause you to pull off. So that's the first thing that you might need to address. The second thing that you might need to address is your timing. And this is probably gonna be the biggest factor. The reason that most people pull off their shots is simply because they hit late and they don't have time to hit their shot. So the hard thing about the forehand and all, all tennis strokes in general, obviously the ball is traveling towards you at a certain speed and we have to turn rotation into forwards movement so we can hit through the ball because that contact point is the most important part. We need to kind of hit through the ball in that direction to hit it cleanly. If we're coming across it, our chances of hitting it cleanly go down dramatically. So we have to start the swing. There's the racket drop. We drive through that back hip. We end up in the racket lag, but then there's this period where we've basically done all of the work and now the racket is being thrown forwards into contact. And that's what you see from the slow motion footage of the pros. So it's done, the work's done and the racket is kind of thrown forwards and you see it come through. And again, it looks slightly different with a straight arm to with a bent arm, but it's still a similar thing. Well, if you don't start your swing early enough, so you're a little bit late, you get all of this done, and then your brain suddenly recognizes that the ball is too close. It doesn't allow you to extend through uh, and hit cleanly through the ball, and that's what causes you to pull off your shots. This is why it's such a hard habit to break. It's why players have coaching sessions, the coach tells them what to do, and they try and do it over and over again, and they keep pulling off it, and when they go into point play and match play, it tends to happen even more, because the issue comes down to, to timing. So they're the main two reasons that you're gonna be pulling off your shots, and if you want to be able to hit cleanly through the ball so you can hit your forehand with power and control, they're really the things that you need to address. When it comes to both of those issues, there's kind of an on-court and an off-court part. So we'll discuss both of them, starting with spacing. You know, if you're getting too close to the ball, part of the solution is going to be, okay, you need to focus on your spacing when you're practicing. So if you're just drilling with a partner, you're just constantly thinking about being a little bit further away from the ball, and potentially might, that might solve the problem. But unfortunately, a lot of players' visual systems aren't very good at judging distance and depth, and they're not very good at predicting where the ball's going, so the spatial awareness isn't good enough, so they can't read where it's going, and that's why they end up getting a little bit too close to the ball. So that might be something you need to address off-court, and I'll talk more about that in in a moment and it's going to be a similar thing when it comes to timing if your timing is off and you're you're hitting the ball late you can try and address that on court so you can kind of really try and consciously think through that contact point understanding that you need to meet it out in front so as you're practicing the ball's coming towards you think about trying to to meet the ball out a little bit sooner Something that go along with that is potentially being a little bit lighter on your toes. So a lot of players tend to kind of get stuck to the ground. And when you're stuck to the ground, it's harder to time the ball well. So just kind of working on your footwork, being a little bit lighter on your toes, that might help you to, to meet the ball out in front as well. But again, a lot of this, a lot of the time, this stuff comes down to your body not quite being able to do what it needs to do. So when it comes to timing, there's the visual component again. So can you predict how far the ball is away? Can you predict the speed of the ball so you can start your swing at the right time? And we've also got the coordination that comes along with it. Can you actually control your body in the right sequence so that you can use the correct technique and adjust the technique and the speed of the swing based on the ball that's coming towards you? So the reason that you're pulling off your shots comes down to either being too close 
or not meeting the ball out in front or basically hitting the ball late, swinging too late. The solutions are part on court work, but a lot of the time it's working on stuff off the court to, to resolve the issues that are going on that are creating the problem in the first place. I wish it could be more simple than that. I wish we could fix these issues just by hitting thousands and thousands of balls. But as you know, there are a lot of people out there playing tennis. Most people don't have good timing, especially most intermediate adults. And it's this behind the scenes stuff that creates the problem. So what I've done to help you with that is I've got a couple of resources. I've got a free vision program that's just going to help you to train your vision. And it's going to start to improve these sorts of things. I'll place a link down in the description and I'll place a link up there. But I've also got a masterclass that's going to explain how all this stuff works, how you can train it in more detail. And it's going to take you through some really cool assessments so you can start to figure out what's going on. So if you are getting too close to the ball or you're hitting the ball late, we can start to figure out why that is. So those are going to be part of this masterclass, which again, I'll place the link down there and I'll place the link up there so you can check them out. Okay. Hopefully that helps you to understand what's going on. It's not always quite as simple as just trying to hit through the ball. Normally there's something causing it. So being too close or hitting the ball late. And then there's different options of what you might need to do to address those. So if you've got any questions about what I've said, uh, obviously feel free, ask them down in the comment section and I'll get back to you as quick as I can.